Hello, and welcome to episode 5 of Let's Play Low Poly Modeling Myself. I'm Valentino, and today we are going to talk about UVW mapping. So, what is UVW mapping? Well, it's the mathematical process in which to apply a shader or a texture to a three-dimensional object. What's UV mapping? Well, UV mapping is very specifically the UVW process in which we do it for 3D models. Usually, that's what we all refer to when we talk about UV mapping. So, what are we going to do, and what are some key concepts that I've learned over the years for it? Well, simply put, we want to use as much space as possible on our map. And we want to do it as efficiently as possible. You know, in the non-scary way. We don't want to spend a lot of time on it, and we want to, get, want to make it easy to paint. And I'll show you these techniques a little bit later. So, let's see. Important things to understand about UV maps. Well, first, if you didn't know, what I'm really talking about is we're going to take these triangles and take, create them, or put them into texture coordinates so we can paint on them in a 2D space. Because, you know, this object's 3D. Now, if you're using a 3D paint tool such as Body Paint or ZBrush, you still might want to do this, even though you might have more efficient polyconservative ways in order to do it. And this is because you still might want to take your final map into Photoshop and add more additional detail to it. I know I do, especially if I'm using ZBrush. I've always, always went back to my map and added additional detail. And sometimes it's great to have an organic unwrap that you can look at and know where you can add detail to and read it with the human eye. So, what do we need to make sure of when we're unwrapping? Well, we want to add seams which are going to exist where we want them. You know, places most people aren't going to look or it's easy to paint hidden areas to. You know, like a button-up shirt having a natural seam down here. But actually, that would be over here, over here. So we might not put it there. I mean, for the sides. Sides are a nice video game place to hide seams. Now, no matter how well your unwrap is organically, you're going to have some type of area that's going to be distorted. We're going to try and hide ours under the arm. Why? Most people aren't going to look there. Same thing with the leg area, the crotch. Since our heads and scalps are a separate process, we already know where our, or a, sepa, uh, a separate object, we know where our seams are going to be for that. So, what else do we need to know about unwrapping before we actually do it? Well, you need to know about pixel density. Now, this might be a new term for some of you, and I've met artists that have no idea this existed, and they never even thought about it. Now to me, that's frightening. But what you should know is how this works, why it works that way, and how you can control it. Have you ever played a video game where you were walking around and your character had more detail on him than the rest of the world? Kind of looks like you shouldn't exist in that world, or that you don't belong. It just screams, hey, I'm a 3D model. Well. As game artists, we really don't want that to happen. We want you to believe that this character exists in that world naturally. So you want him to appear that he has the same detail level of that world. Now, here's a good example. When you were playing Grand Theft Auto 3 for the first time, did you ever stop and say, wow, the tires on that car look ridiculously simple? They're not even round. They're almost blocks. Well, you probably didn't. Because everything else in the world was that low poly. It just fit. You never questioned why your character was going around in a car that had six sides to its wheels. It just looked natural. Because anything else that's as round as a tire, like a trash can, also had six sides. And your mind just accepts it as, in this world, that is believable. Objects that roll have six sides. 
So if we were to change that detail a little bit, like give wheels super high poly counts, would you notice the trash can looking really off-putting? Certainly. Same thing with a character. If your character was super high poly in Grand Theft Auto 3, it totally would look out of place in Grand Theft Auto 3's environment. You would actually think the environment looks really bad. You wouldn't be like, wow, this character seems really high poly. You would just be like, these buildings suck. So, that's pixel density as well. Even though it's really talking about poly count, and probably poly density, I guess, is a better term, pixel density is the same idea. We want to make sure our texture quality is the same detail level all around. So if I put a 512 on my character, I want to make sure that nothing's more detailed in the environment than my character, unless it's much larger than that area. Now, for our character specifically, we want to make sure that areas of the map that we focus on, like the face and the torso, which I was detailing about or talking about earlier, don't have more detail than other areas that seem unnatural. We don't want to make my shoes take up half the map and be exquisitely finely detailed, you know, and make it look like I have high quality Doc Martens on and then everything else look like blurred crap. Players would notice that and just think the model looks like crap. And the thing we're worried about is making sure everything's the same quality, because if everything's the same quality, it's going to be believable and you, as a player, are going to accept it. Since we're, low, we're using a low texture resolution, if I have text written on here and it looks a little bit blurry or a little bit pixelated, players will accept it as long as everything else is. If there's text anywhere else, if it's perfectly legible, it's going to break the you know, illusion that this is a real character. And this is how we're going to fool people. Now, let's say you didn't understand anything I just said, or you understand it just a little bit, so how do you take that little bit of understanding and apply it to your real world texture and unwrapping? Well, nice and simple. Your head? Try not to give it more space than your torso. Or make them pretty much equal. I'm probably going to give the head about a fourth of the texture. And, since the hair is pretty important too, it's probably going to be somewhere, not really that size, maybe about an eighth. The body is going to take up a large space, and the legs and arms and hands aren't going to take up that much. Even though the hands are super important, remember, they're tiny. And even if you did paint the detail there, most people wouldn't notice it. Now, we're going to talk about something that's more your game specific. When you are texturing your model, you have to think about how the camera is going to see your model. And this seems weird, but follow me for a few minutes. Now, we all played Fallout 1 and 2, hopefully, because we're all really educated game artists, and we played video games back in the day, and we really like how they worked. So, Fallout 1 and 2, what's your character look like? Right? He's tiny. Walks around, and it was a 3D model on a sprite sheet. You saw it from all sides. Now, what about Gears of War? Ah, you're seeing your character mostly from the back, right? Now, what about Jack and Daxter? You know, because you run around the camera, you generally see all portions of it. You're starting to see what I'm, what I'm showing you guys? What is the camera going to see? What is the camera going to show the user? Because we're going to have to think about this. Because what the sh camera is showing the user is the areas we need to worry about detailing. Now, if my character, since we, we already discussed, the theoretical game I'm making is an action-adventure game starring me, I'm going to have a weapon, we're going to fight monsters, I'm going to have special moves, all kinds of crazy stuff. So, like Jack and Daxter, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be free-running around, and the camera is going to have a slight lag to follow me. And you're going to see all around my body at a general area of about this size. Well, this size, probably. 
Now, if I was making a Gears of War style third person shooter, or a game such as, well, Gears of War, I guess, when I turn, camera's pretty much fixed behind my back. You would very, very rarely see my face except in cinematics or some special animated sequence. So I would have to detail my back and make it look really interesting. These are things you should worry about. Now, we're getting on about 10 minutes here, so now that you got all those quick concepts down and you know how I'm going to be using this character and why you should worry about that when you're unwrapping. And why we unwrap and how are the ideas and concepts behind unwrapping in pixel density, I can now actually show you methods to unwrap. And these methods will be applied generally to anything you do. I mean, well, no matter what package you use. So I'm going to pause real quick, stop the video, start a new one up, and we'll start unwrapping our character.